first. So last night, the Dallas Cowboys beat the New York Giants 20-15 to in the Meadowlands. And it was, for all intents and purposes, kind of a must-win for Dallas. I mean, you listen, folks have waxed poetic about what their schedule ahead was going to look like. But if Dallas falls to 1-3, and three, right, you got at, at my Pittsburgh Steelers. That's a tough one against the best defense in football. Then you got to come home. But it's for the Detroit Lions. By the way, Dallas has yet to win a home game. We'll see if they can do so in week six. Then they got to buy. Then they got to go to San Francisco, a team that has up absolutely owned them in every which way. Okay. You got to deal with at the Atlanta Falcons. That's a problem. Then you got to go back home to play the Philadelphia Eagles. You stay home, but you play the Houston Texans. Then you go to Washington. I mean, it is a it is an absolute gauntlet for Dallas moving forward. They had to win that game last night. And to their credit, they did. Would have been nice if Brandon Aubrey, you know, hit what would be for him a chip shot at a 50-yard field goal. Would have been nice if they'd have covered. That would have been great. But really for Dallas watching that game last night, I I couldn't help uh, but think of this. Because we know, I say all the time, I've said it for three years on this show, it's like quarterbacks league. Like we we could talk about, listen, coaches matter. No question coaches matter. I can't. I can't emphasize that enough. Your roster, what you have around you, a defense, weapons, all that, that all matters. No question about it. But it's all relevant if you don't have that guy at the quarterback position. And I could not help but ask myself the question. And I'll ask you, the audience, those that are watching right now. Take Dak Prescott off the Dallas Cowboys. Take Daniel Jones off the New York Giants. Insert, who's the guy we we all agree is a pretty average quarterback? Like, who's pretty average? Uh, You know, Justin Fields, maybe. I'm I'm a Steelers fan, but I am objective. Uh, Justin Fields... You know, let's let's talk about the low end starter, high end backups, as I call them. Andy Dalton, Gardner Minshew, like guys that are amazing backups. You'd prefer they not be your starters. Let's take those guys for example. Let's put them in the starting lineup for both these squads. Giants win that game by double digits, and that's not necessarily folks who who know the show long enough know that I am a as big of a Dak Prescott fan as there is. This isn't a Dak Prescott thing. What this is more than anything is if they know that guy. Talking about the Cowboys, of course. And they don't have C.D. Lamb, who got back on the same same track. He took accountability after his poor performance against the Ravens and was really, really good. C.D. Lamb, uh, seven catches for 98 yards and caught a 55-yard bomb for a touchdown. And again, those plays like that, that makes the difference And obviously a, a road divisional matchup in which you win by five points. Outside of those guys, <laughs> guy, folks, Dallas isn't very good. And my guy, Mike Guido, shout out to him. By Coastal Baseball, co-founder of the Grid Network. He was he was on this from day one. Like, this isn't a good team. This, I mean, the, the, Guido, Guido went so far as to say they could win seven games. I didn't go that far. I actually said they went 11 and win the NFC East again because my case was, well, it's kind of the same roster and that same roster with an MVP candidate quarterback and an, an all-world receiver, despite average coaching and a below-average roster, did win 12 games in the division. And I still think Dallas is going to eke out the NFC East. Washington is still a little too young. The Giants, we know they aren't there yet. And as for Philadelphia, love their roster. Don't necessarily trust their quarterback. And I don't like their OC and head coach whatsoever. Do not trust them in big spots. Just off of Dak, they'll be fine. We, we could show you the numbers. What Dak Prescott has done against this New York Giants team. I said on, on, on a Wednesday show and I predicted this game. I said, matchups aside. Because the Giants have the better coach, Brian Dable. Like I was hearing folks say uh, today, oh man, you know, was it Chris Canty? Respect to Chris Canty, former NFL player. But I heard him say on ESPN, yeah, uh, this uh, Brian Dable may not survive this season. I'm thinking, I cannot imagine sitting there for three hours watching the football game that we watched last night, coming home with the takeaway. Yeah, Brian Dable's the problem. Malik Neighbors, excellent. Giants have a solid defense and an improved offensive line. But the Cowboys had Dak Prescott, who still owns the Giants. We can show you his numbers since 2017. It's pretty good. 271 pass yards per game, 28 tuds, six picks, complete 68% of his throws, 111 pass rating, and he is 13-0. and Last time Dak lost to the Giants, Obama was president. Mahomes was at Texas Tech. That's where we were at uh, in, in, in America. But Dak... 13-0 and in his last 13 against the Giants. That is tied for the second longest win streak against one team in the history of the National Football League. So if nothing else, you got that. 
And Dak wasn't amazing. Again, he had 221 yards, but he didn't complete uh, 81% of his passes, two touchdowns, uh, QBR 0 to 100 of 74. That's really good. And a pass rating of 125. That's really, really good. But if you watch that game, if you're a Cowboys fan, ran the ball fine. Um, kind of what you normally do. I mean, CeeDee Lamb, to be honest, was your was your best running back uh, in, in, in certain aspects of this game, right? Dak was accurate. Dak was really good, but he's usually that. Uh, the Cowboys defense, to their credit, did stop the Giants' run game, a run game headlined by Devin Singletary, who's not exactly Alvin Kamara or Derrick Henry last time I checked. Both of those guys ran wild on the Dallas defense the last couple of weeks prior to this week. It's not that talented of a football team. And by the way, the numbers bear it out against the Giants. Like the Giants, you can make the case. You take the quarterbacks off the team. Dak, Daniel Jones, da we know Dak's way better than Daniel Jones, but take them off and just replace them with, with league average quarterbacks. Say they replace them just like two carbon copies. Despite Dallas still, again, having the better quarterback, much, 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 much better quarterback. Giants were kind of better than Dallas throughout most of the night. They had more first downs, more passing first downs, better third down efficiency, more total plays, more total yards, more passing yards, fewer pen way fewer penalties. Cowboys had almost triple the number of penalties the Giants did. In time of possession, they dominated Dallas, despite really not having that much of a run game, which is the ironic part about it, is that Dallas couldn't get off the field. The Giants, it reminded you a lot of the Washington Commanders game, which it, the difference is Giants were able to cash in in the end zone, even though they lost the game. The Giants moved the ball really well in Dallas. They just had, they just came up short in the reds and they came up, you know, empty in a lot of these cases, had to settle for field goals. This, like, this should not have been a game in many aspects. And Dallas isn't creative in offense. Dak is force, fe force feeding one guy because it's the only guy that he trusts because it's the only guy who's earned his trust. The O line got worked again. Tyler Guyton, he's a rookie. He's only four games into his career. So we can't, we can't, you know, judge what he's going to be the rest of his career just off these first four games. But he has not been very good. And like, he has not been very good. This running game is non-existent. And the defense, which, by the way, just lost Micah Parsons and Demarcus Lawrence for potentially two to the next two of the next three weeks. So this is this is going to be, this is going to be a big, big stretch for Dallas. And in order to win these games, and by the way, if you're a Cowboys fan, the optimistic side of you could say, well, how did we win 12 games last year? Well, we had an MVP candidate at quarterback. We had CeeDee Lamb. And that was about it. Jake Ferguson's fine. I actually kind of like Jake Ferguson, but he's nothing special. Brandon Cooks is, can we put him on washed watch? Like, yeah, I mean, I think I think we're starting to get into that. And listen, Brandon Cooks, a good dude. Got nothing against the guy. But Brandon Cooks, a good dude. And has been a Dak supporter, by the way, from day one. He was one of the most vocal supporters of Dak when he was going through the contract negotiations with Jerry Jones. But with that said, and I said coming into the season, Brandon Cooks on his fifth team. Like, there's, there's a reason for that. He's fine, but there's a reason that he didn't even finish second in the Cowboys in receiving. That was their tight end, Jake Ferguson. And there's a reason that CeeDee Lamb had almost 1,000. This is a true stat, folks. Almost 1,000 more receiving yards than the second leading receiver on the Dallas Cowboys. That represents 988 to be exact. That represents the largest discrepancy in the National Football League a season ago. It's four, it's 88, and that's it. So watching that game last night, well, CD Lamb was really good and Dak was efficient, didn't make mistakes, didn't turn the ball over, you know, took what the defense gave him, was was aggressive in certain throws to CD Lamb, was dead. There was a there was a second and nine early in the first quarter. There's not many throws that, that that can not many quarterbacks can make the throw Dak made. It was a second and nine. It was a, just a a quick little slant. It wasn't anything you know crazy on first glance, but when Amazon showed the replay, the defensive back is all over CD Lamb. I almost to the point where they could have called PI. And Dak put it perfectly right there for C.D. Lamb, and the timing was perfect. Like C.D., now after the holdout, he's four games in, that the timing is starting to, to look better between those two. But again, Giants, more first downs, better time of possession, way less penalties. A lot of that's coaching. And frankly, a lot of that is the fact that the Giants, in terms of the receiving department, that Dallas has better, uh, you know, it's better in that regard just because of C.D. Lamb, but Malik Neighbors is coming. I'm not sure what else he has around him, but Malik Neighbors is coming. The Giants O-line, I watched that game last night. They're better than Dallas's. Full stop. They're better than Dallas's O-line. The Giants have a solid defense, or actually a really good defensive front. Like, I, I, you know, some folks were talking about coming into the season, could the Giants be like a fringe top six or seven defensive line? 
I thought they worked Dallas's O-line throughout the course of that game. The Giants moved the ball effectively. Now Micah Parsons is out. Now Demarcus Lawrence is hurt, according to Mike McCarthy, even worse than Parsons is. So, listen, I don't like just, uh, listen, we're nine days out of this game. Uh, but I don't like Dallas' chances at all against my Steelers. At all. On the road, yeah, you get extra time to prepare. But it's Mike Tomlin versus Mike McCarthy. I'm going to go Tomlin. It's the, the, the Cowboys with two elite players against the Steelers defense who has bare minimum four elite players on that side of the ball. I'd go five. Uh, Joey Porter Jr., Minka Fitzpatrick, Patrick Queen, Alex Highsmith, and obviously the great T.J. Watt. So I don't like Dallas in that matchup. They come home for Detroit now. They're home for that game, and Dak has had a lot of success in his career when facing Jared Goff, but Goff has the significantly better roster. Then he goes to San Francisco. I'm just going to stand the out front. Dallas is going to lose that game. Like they, they are not beating the Niners. Niners will probably be healthier back th- by, by that point. Kyle Shanahan is, again, McCarthy's okay. Uh, Shanahan's like one of the three best football coaches on planet Earth. It's, it's an unfair matchup in that regard. At Atlanta, I, I like Dallas's matchup in that regard. Dallas has, Dak, and, and when he's faced Kirk Cousins in his career, has been unbelievable. He's been great against Philadelphia. I like Dallas in that matchup as well. Houston, we'll see. So, but these next, like, three games for the Cowboys, I could very easily see them being two and five going into that going to that Atlanta game. I really could. So winning last night, kudos. There's no such thing as a bad win. But that was a reality check for the Cowboys. It's not a very good football team. They're just carried by an awesome quarterback and an awesome wide receiver. Full stop. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.